Asus have some nice gaming laptops coming in 2024. And I can show you an early first look as Asus have sponsored this video. First up is the new Zephyrus G14. And the biggest improvements they've made this year are that they've made it thinner and added an OLED screen now. I'm a big fan of OLED screens because I think they look excellent. They provide the best response time, colors and contrast and get fairly bright. But not only that, for the first time, G-Sync is available with an OLED laptop panel. There's a huge technical explanation, but long story short, G-Sync didn't work with last gen OLED gaming laptop screens. But that changes with these new 2024 panels. The newer G14 is 4mm thinner and 200g lighter compared to last year's version. And that's possible because it maxes out with NVIDIA RTX 4070 graphics now. In real gaming workloads, the RTX 4050, 4060 and 4070 all max out at around 100 watts, despite spec sheets claiming dynamic boost ranges of up to 140 watts. So with that in mind, ASUS were able to slim down the new G14, as the 4070 and below just don't need a bigger chassis. But last year's thicker design will still be available if you want either the RTX 4080 or 4090. But based on my data, most people are buying the RTX 4070 and 4060 GPUs anyway. So having this improved G14 is certainly welcome. The RTX 4060 G14 that I've got here also has a 180 watt charger. So it's smaller compared to the 240 watt charger that came with last year's G14, improving the portability even more. My G14 has AMD's new Ryzen 9 8945HS processor with NVIDIA RTX 4060 graphics. The memory is faster this year with LPDDR5X, but if we take a look inside, we can see it's using soldered memory, presumably to help keep it thinner. It's available with up to 32 gigs, but again, last year thicker design is still available if you prefer upgradable memory. Based on AMD's information, their new Hawkpoint CPUs are basically the same as last gen, but with better AI performance, which will be useful as programs and apps start being able to leverage the dedicated NPU. The new G14's overall design just looks a bit more professional and less gamery. The keys and touchpad are more angled and less rounded looking, and it just looks cleaner and more simplistic. The keycaps are 12.2% larger, and the keyboard deck is made from a CNC aluminum body now, which makes it feel more solid. The chassis last year was magnesium alloy, but now it's all aluminum, giving it a more premium metallic feel. The lid has a new look with what ASUS are calling slash lighting. There are different effects you can set, audio visualizations, and even system notifications so you can get various updates with the lid closed. The older lid lighting design was optional, but it also made the laptop a little thicker. So this new slash design just helps the laptop stay thinner. The new front facing speakers now run along the sides of the keyboard instead of sitting at the back last year. And they seriously sound amazing. They're clear with some nice bass and just better than any other 14 inch laptop I tested last year. And a big improvement compared to last year's G14. You're not missing any ports despite the new thinner design. The new 2024 model has the same connectivity as last year's G14. Just that one of the Type-A ports is on the left now, which I think is better as now you've got one on either side. All ports are also further to the back this year because there aren't any air exhaust vents on the left and right sides anymore. Combined with the fact that the G14's lift up design is also missing, I was starting to wonder what this means for thermals, but they have added an extra third fan inside compared to last year to make up the difference. Unfortunately, this is an early engineering sample, so I can't test thermals in depth just yet. But make sure you're subscribed for my upcoming full review where I'll be able to test everything. Next up, we've got the larger Zephyrus G16. And the basic idea is the same. Give it a similar design with the new slash lighting, make it thinner and lighter, and give it an OLED screen. The G16's new OLED screen has a higher 240 hertz refresh rate, double compared to the G14. But the G16's resolution is actually a little lower than the G14, despite being a larger panel. It still looks great in any case. Again, I just think OLED screens look the best. 
So the new Zephyrus G14 maxes out with Nvidia RTX 4070 graphics, and last year's G16 also maxed out at 4070. But now this year, the new G16 is also available with RTX 4080 and 4090, which is what I've got here. ASUS tells me that the Zephyrus G16 is also their only gaming laptop using Intel's new Media Lake processors. So we've got the NPU for accelerating AI workloads as well as Intel's much more powerful integrated Arc graphics, which were a huge step up compared to last gen. Not only is the new G16 more powerful in games, but it's 6mm thinner and lighter compared to last year's version 2. The RTX 4090 I've got maxes out at 120 watts in manual mode. But performance is still great considering the thinnest size of the laptop. Again, unfortunately, I can't share actual FPS results just yet because this is an early engineering sample. So subscribe for that upcoming full review. Oh, and both of these laptops have a mock switch with Advanced Optimus 2, which is no real surprise considering ASUS had this in pretty much their whole gaming laptop lineup last year as well. ASUS says the front-facing speakers have a nice upgrade this year. And they definitely sound good, similar to the G14, but I actually thought that the G14 was a little clearer, despite being smaller. The I.O. is spread out better on the new G16 too. Last year's model had two Type-C ports on the left, but now there's one on each side, which again just gives you more choice for connecting stuff. It looks like removal of the Ethernet port was a necessary compromise for the thinner and lighter design though. But the ports are placed closer to the back instead of right down the front now as the left and right air vents have disappeared here too, just like the G14. The RTX 4080 and 4090 config have this vapor chamber cooler with two fans for cooling, while the RTX 4070, 4060 and 4050 versions have a standard heat pipe cooler with three fans. The larger G16 has soldered memory to keep it thinner, just like the G14, but the G16 has room for two M.2 storage slots, whereas the smaller G14 fits one. As for ASUS's other 2024 gaming laptops, most of their Intel models are going to keep using last year's Intel 13th gen processors instead of the newer 14th gen. Only the Strix laptops like the Strix Scar 16, Strix Scar 18, Strix G16 and Strix G18 will get the latest Intel 14th gen HX processors. And the reason for that is, like we saw on the desktop side, the performance differences between Intel's 13th and 14th gen Raptor Lake parts just isn't that big. So why spend more money on 14th gen? If 13th gen is still competitive, then it makes perfect sense to keep using it, especially if it doesn't cost as much. And then save the newer, more expensive 14th gen chips for those higher end laptops for people that want to buy the absolute best. This year, the Strix Scar 18 also has the option of a new 240Hz mini LED screen with more than 2000 backlight zones. The popular Tough A16 also gets an upgrade to AMD's Dragon Range Pro processors, which are the higher end Zen 4 HX parts with more cores and threads. The A16 will go up to the Ryzen 9 7845HX with 12 cores. So if you want the 16 core 7945HX or 7945HX 3D, you'll still have to look at the ASUS Scar 17 for now. The 2024 version of the A16 also gets Nvidia graphics, with up to the RTX 4070. But don't worry, last year's popular 7600 S configuration isn't going anywhere. ASUS are also launching the Tough F16 this year, which is basically an Intel and Nvidia version of the popular A16. So it's not just the all AMD config that gets the tallest 16x10 screen in 2024. So some nice improvements to these other models, but the big changes are focused around the Zephyrus G14 and Zephyrus G16. Again, make sure you get subscribed for my upcoming full reviews, where I'll test everything like like battery life, game FPS, thermals, and more. But for now, you can check out the rest of my CES 2024 coverage over here next.